The Sleeping Beauty Fairy Tale, also called Little Briar Rose or Dawn Röschen in German and La Belle au Bois Dormant in French, is a seemingly innocent tale for children by the German Grimm brothers from the 19th century in 1812. The Grimm brothers were Freemasons and the word Grimm in German means grim in English as in rough. How charming the Grimm Freemasons and the pharaonic Freemason fairy tale where the word fairy tale comes from pharaoh tale as all these seemingly innocent tales are ancient tales of the royal pharisocracy they are important for the Freemasons. The original German title Don Röschen means the thorn of the little rose, a rose as in Rosicrucians, the order of the rose and another symbol of the English pharisocracy, still worn on the shirts of the national English rugby team. I remind you that rugger still is the game of the elite and the pharisocracy played at boarding schools, offices, academies and elite universities where soccer is for the masses. The elite with their roses on their rugby shirts even say that soccer is a gentleman's sport played by crooks but rugger is a crook sport played by gentlemen. The thirteen wise women in this pharaoh tale uh, Sleeping Beauty represent Osiris being butchered into 13 parts and these 13 wise women being the sisters of Isis and you don't want to know who the prince is who kisses her awake after 100 years of sleep into the awakening enlightenment you just don't want to know and neither does your child whom you're telling the story to it's the Prince of Darkness who initiates a still sleeping young girl, usually at the birth of a child or symbolical Horus, where the covenant with Seton or Satan is being sealed with the kiss of death. This is similar to the Freemason ritual where he or she has to symbolically die first to become illuminated into the light of the Illuminati. This is why the American flag has 13 stripes. So every time you hear the number 13, you know Osiris is in the game, together with the Horus Matrix. And it was in fact the 13th witch who cast a spell on the girl, because the 13th part of Osiris, as in witchcraft, couldn't be found anymore. So they replaced it with an obelisk, the phallic symbol of the pharaonic domination, carved on top for symbolizing the circumcision for the slaves an important part of the covenant with evil because it mutilates the creation by the divine. So the twelve plates that Sleeping Beauty puts on the table only represent the twelve body parts of Osiris that could be found and the thirteenth plate she didn't put on the table giving grim and wrath to the thirteenth witch that missing 13th plate represents Osiris, his missing and circumcised genitals, as in fact only a part of it was missing. I'm not a religious person, but here in the Bible, chapter 29 and chapter 30, it says a lot of interesting things of how the pharaohs are scattered all, all over the earth and rule over all nations. Like here it says, and I will disperse the Egyptians among the nations and scatter them through the countries. They're everywhere. And they're hiding in the bays in the mountains, in the Swiss mountains. So ancient Egypt was destroyed by Babylon. And uh, so that's why they came to Europe and uh, made Switzerland, the Swiss Alps to the bays, terrorizing the rest of Europe. You know, here too it's, it says how they rule over other nations and how they stand above other nations you know uh, they feel they, are, they they think they are more you know like like the Swiss superior race for instance you know. interesting I'm not religious but it's quite interesting and well 
I know that this part is true. The pharaohs are ruling. And all these innocent stories, they are in fact pharaoh tales. The pharaoh tales. Don't tell them to your children. The pharaohs rule and even the seemingly innocent pharaoh tales are theirs and being revived by the masons. All these stories about princes and princesses of the fair aristocracy. Don't tell these stories to your children because they will never become a princess but will only be trapped by the prince of darkness. Just as Polanski promising little girls to become Hollywood's next princess and take some pictures for the next queen of all models only for the trap to close down on the wannabe sleeping beauty and the prince of darkness moves in for his final move. The pharaonic tradition demands that on the first public appearance after the birth of a royal pharaonic Per A prince the father must show a falcon because of the Horus matrix and Horus the son of Isis and Osiris being the falcon god this is how the entire Per A, big house of the worldwide pharaonic bloodline knows and have things acknowledged that the new prince born July 22nd is one of them. And this must be done after the first full 13 days of the following month and not at the 13th day which is not full ended yet. Thus emphasizing the Horus Matrix and his father Osiris being cut into 13 pieces by Sethon, with Isis at Satan's side. So 13 days for the Horus Matrix by the Sisters of Isis were accomplished in the morning of the 14th on which Prince William had his first public appearance showing his newborn son by showing the Falcon what he did here in Wales uh, yesterday August the 14th, 2013. Diana Spencer told me all about this and how Charles was just a dumb smiling puppet and the truly misled Osiris and how the boy Horus, when he becomes a father, he automatically incarnates Osiris, the murdered one. Therefore, William doesn't know anything, just smiles and obeys. But the sisters of Isis and their octagon bays, they know. And this is why this branch of the Per A Pharaohs always goes in a holiday in Klosters Octagon, Switzerland, to be at home for a few weeks. This is how much they love Britain and its people, going abroad as quick as possible in their spare time. She told me how the sisters initiated her into the Horus Matrix, and at a certain moment after the birth of her children she revolted and refused and it was in fact because of the Horus Matrix and the reason of all wars that she became so ferociously against wars and landmines. So the sisters brought good old lady park her balls in to destroy her and finally killing her by using the Boston Brakes because she, re she revolted against the Horus Matrix. And here we can see Horus or the newborn prince flying away. His life is beginning. So the pharaohs became the aristocracy. The aristocracy. A it means pregnant and ri is the sun in demotic. So they were born out of the sun. And the aristocracy are ruling in Freemason lodges because there were too many revolutions going on. So you think these people here showing their falcons uh, you think they're Europeans like us? No. I mean, why did they show this falcon? They could have shown a nice sports car, couldn't they? If you don't understand history and the pharaohs, you will never understand the newspaper and the actual politics. Never. Ever. I found this British coin when I was in uh, Calais some couple of weeks ago. And look here, 
Uh, it's one penny. Here we can see the reptilian feet here. Now why do they put some reptilian foot on it, feet on it? And this here is a crocodile with some pharaonic feather on it, on his nose. Now why would they do this? And uh, well, if I look at the other side, well, there she is, the old crocodile. And there she is again, the old lizard. So, if you send me your coins, I'll analyze them for them, for you. Even better, you do it yourself and upload it. So, and then here on the other side is um, Lady Di and uh, and the other and the other fella. And um, she so on this day, I remember I got it just three days after my birthday it was in 1981. And um, so on this day, she became the Princess of Wales, or as she later would say, the Prisoner of Wales. And yeah, poor Diana. Here we can see an Isis Cola, which I bought in the motherland and base of today's pharaohs in Switzerland. The bottle shows even the Isis horn with the sun, which the goddess shows on her head. and of which is not even sure that it represents the sun and horns. It can also represent the womb and symbol of their warfare as the obelisk does. In the Bible it says Exodus 14, 13 Moses answered the people, do not be afraid, stand firm and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. Well, obviously the Bible is wrong and full of lies, because the Pharaohs never disappeared, and no Moses ever delivered us from them. See the videos, the Pharaohs show Pharaohistocracy and Octagon, the Empire of Darkness. I tell you, the Bible was written and falsified by the Pharaohs themselves, a book which has been encoded for the initiates only, who laugh at us, saying that only a fool would believe all the miracles and fairy tales of whom some of the religious fanatics are even willing to become pharaohs, dogmatic executioners, and manipulated by, in fact, Seton, Horus and Isis. This Exodus 14.13 was the favourite passage of the last prophet, Sina van Rensburg, who died in South Africa, 1926, and even he didn't get the whole picture right. And you might all stop waiting for some divine intervention of some celestial saviour, because there won't be any. We have to do it ourselves, and nobody else is going to do it for us. The Pharaoh and his army disappeared in the Sea of Peoples and live amongst us and rule the world. They became the nobility and were the aristocratic old world order who finally became Freemasonry and rule over us in the new world order in the secret lodges of this shadow government of the same old Pharaohs. All signs, symbols and proofs of their actual presence and existence are there. Even on this pharaonic beverage from the motherland, 
here. Oh, look at this one here in Boulogne sur Mer. It's always the roundabouts, you know? There are probably 13 trees. How many are there? Five, ten. Oh, never mind. Whoa, man. I can't get any closer because it's dripping like hell. Is that a real one? Whoa, the capstone. The obelisk, symbol of the pharaonic domination. Oh, this is magnificent. Well, you know, what more to say? Uh, I don't want my camera to get all wet, you know, so... They're from the other side in Boulogne-sur-Mer. Bad weather. Freemasons. There's nice the sea. This is the pharaonic sun bark. Now, they have some pyramids here. Oh, the weather is real bad. Another one in uh, Boulogne. So this is the old city. The rest was bombed in the war in 1944 because the Allies, by the Allies, because they thought that the uh, the Jerry's were here. Look, the two sphinx sphinxes in front. Pharaonic shit. Sunbark. It lives. The European have become the pharaohs through the uh, the first ride of the Prime Noctus. It's demo right now. Very bad weather. It's hot. Old palm trees here. Like in Egypt. Very bad weather. Not good for my camera. Never mind. Batteries empty. Oh, there's the old town. That's the sun bark. Pharaoh. It's all pharaonic. They rule the world. It's everywhere. Oh, Boulogne is full of it. Look at it. Full of it. Got the pharaohs all over. Oh, look at the the wood. Look at the wood. It's a real boat. Maybe it's an original one. On September the 26th, 1976, the coffin of their ancestor, the pharaoh Ramses the Great, or Ramses the Second, was flown to France, where his pharaonic descendants have total control and landed at Le Bourget Airport in Paris, also called Parisi, or Per Isis, meaning the House of Isis and got full military honors by the presidential Republican Guard all lined up to welcome the 3,000 years old mummified remains of the famous pharaonic ancestor of the Per A Big House royal bloodline. And even President Valéry Giscard d'Estaing was there, himself a full-blooded aristocrat in line with the French king Louis the Fifteenth, and descendant from both par parental sides of further dukes and counts. So this is in Wikipedia. I told you so. 
the pharaohs became the European aristocracy or old feudal world order and spread their pharaonic DNA through raping the European women through the prime noctus, first right or droit du seigneur. Or does anyone seriously think that these homegrown pharaohs of their new world order just deploy the highest form of presidential and military honors to some 3,000 years old dried out body of some pre prehistoric desert ruler from some faraway Middle Eastern desert hills? I mean, who of us understands why they have to receive a pile of flesh and bones mummy by the president and his presidential guard? Well, no one, right? And the mummy can't hear nor see anymore. So the whole show was not for us, as no one understands it. So they're hiding something from us, what we don't know. This was a pharaoh show for insiders and initiates only, saluting their direct ancestor of our masters, the enemy within, of the pharaohistocracy on all key positions. And if they pay the highest tribute to a pharaoh mummy, equally to some presidential visit, then all presidents must be pharaohs, just as every US president is a direct descendant of some faraway English king of the worldwide per a pharaohistocracy. They only honor their own, and we are their slaves, and a load of nobodies to them, who believe every damn official lie, 9-11 scam or false flag psyop being told. So it stopped raining for a moment, so I'll do it again. I just went to the uh, tribunal to leave a uh, laissez uh, in French, laissez une plainte entre les mains du procureur. Yeah, well, it's behind here, against Switzerland, behind here in the, uh, so, yeah, so there's my gear. They didn't want to let me in enter with all my gear, you know, so they made a fuss, you know, I said, I'm, I'm not going to leave my gear, you know, with all that total control shit, you know. So there's another pyramid, and here's a big pyramid here, with some sphinx. Front. So here it says it's the uh, solar ship. Here it says in French and here in English the solar ship of Cheops. They rebuild it. I told you the French are quite uh, an industrious people. You know? Don't underestimate them. Uh, Pharaohs are here, right? And due to the uh, prime noctus or the first right, there's uh, most of the Europeans that have the uh, the pharaonic genetics or DNA. That's how I, how the aristocracy did it, and they were the pharaohs. Boulogne-sur-Mer. Sphinx, the other Sphinx.
Fantastic when it doesn't rain for a minute here. So I do it a little bit again, it's not raining at the moment. The obelisk here. Quite windy. Symbol of the pharaonic domination, they're still here. They never left us. And uh, it's them who became the aristocracy and everything belonged to them. Even our women in the first ride, the Prime Noctus. They took uh, our women on the first night of the marriage and shagged them, so this, this is how they... Uh, all the pharaonic Europeans have so much pharaonic DNA, we found out now, so this is how they did it. And that's why this is a phallic symbol. And on top, it's like uh, cut here, and it's a symbol of the, um, of the circumcision, as it is carved on top here. There's an original obelisk here in boulogne sur mer So it's the pharaohs who became the aristocracy, and I call them the pharaohocracy. And they became the Freemasons because they were afraid of us. We have guns now, we have... Um, only we don't understand very much. And then all those revolutions came, so they decided to hide in Freemason lodges. So I do the tour now. This is an important one, it's really a horrible one actually, I can say. So, don't run me over please. So it's not raining for the moment, you can see there's a lot of uh, palm trees here. So from the other side here. The symbol of the pharaonic domination made by the uh, by the Freemasons, their descendants, were all aristocrats. Uh, one more time from this side here. Mm. No, 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 no! Nice living here, eh? <laughs> I wonder if those European women who were victim of the first right, if they really were raped or if they sort of enjoyed being with a clean, smiling and gallant prince, having some wine and a good meal. And if you look at how more than 50% of the European marriages end up in a divorce, we might very well ask ourselves if the dissatisfaction among European couples has a lot longer tradition than that. European women, as in the Eve syndrome, most probably are having a long-standing bond with the fair aristocracy ruling over their own man through the Horus Matrix. As you can see them sitting in all offices today, regulating society. Anyway, this is how the pharaonic DNA came infested into the European peoples. Therefore, the Prime Noctus or First Rite was less a rape than a convenient grasp for power, thus becoming the sisters of Isis for the Pharaonic princes. That's why all those women waving flags when Prince William passes by and that's why there's no other country in the world as Switzerland with the highest percentage of pharaonic DNA in the overall population. And it was thus through the Prime Noctus with some of the more willing European women that the lower nobility like the dukes, earls, counts and barons were created 
out of the purely pharaonic per a high nobility of kings, queens and princes. And it's all a matter of blood anyway, who has the highest degree of uh, pure pharaonic per a DNA uh, blood on which the whole hi hierarchy is being built upon. The most powerful, they have the, uh, the, the most uh, concentrated uh, bloodline of the pharaohs. Just as the cops and police are from the same line of medieval knights with a lesser degree of pharaonic DNA, leading to the expression a line of duty. And this is why the police often appears as a different species with whom it is difficult to communicate on the same level, who shoot, kill and arrest us or deliver us to the Nazis or the Gestapo with whom the entire European police collaborated. One really must have some other genetics to do so. Even on the bus is a bloody obelisk here, in Calais. This is a message to the Russian army and the Russian people. This great Russian Major General Konstantin P. Petrov saw the Pharaoh show and knows how the Nazi Templars of Octagon, Switzerland were the brain behind World War II who are responsible for the murder on 25 million Russians because the Swiss Nazi Octagon Templars financed and ordered Hitler throughout the whole war. Let's team up. Начиная со времен древнего Египта, вот эта мафия, которая управляет процессами на планете Земля, она мигрировала, и сейчас ее основная штаб-квартира это Швейцария. Кстати, вот информация к размышлению. Многие зрители наверняка смотрели фильм «17 мгновений весны» про Штирлиц. Если там помните, вот вся Европа полыхала в пожарах войны, а доктор Плечнер кормил лебедей в Женевском озере и спрашивает, если фюрер был такой лихой малый, то почему бы ему не взять и не грабануть швейцарские банки, там же ведь деньги, золото лежало, а Гитлер туда не пошел. То есть Швейцария была неприкосновенной. Почему? Да потому что Гитлер прекрасно понимал, что в Швейцарии находятся его хозяева. И весь победный марш Гитлера по Европе был ничем иным, как сдача ему под единое руководство всего людского, промышленного и военного потенциала Европы для броска на СССР. А зачем? А дело в том, что, осуществляя вот эту самую глобализацию, вот эти глобализаторы, они подвели человечество к глобальному системному кризису. И... This rare picture shows Adolf Hitler in Zurich, Switzerland in 1923 when the Swiss Templars financed him 30,000 Swiss francs, which is about half a million euros today, for the first financing only. And for the rest of the war, the Swiss Nazi Templars gave all the orders and made the concentration camps possible, even ordering them. These are all Swiss Nazi Templars' ideas. Ее уже мы продаем, я вот помню маленьким мальчиком, то есть я из-под крана запросто воду пьешь, и в общем никаких проблем, а теперь из-под крана вряд ли кто воду пьет, даже детишки уже не пьют, они знают, бутылочки надо покупать, продавать там, из них водичку пить. Следующая проблема вот в этом смысле, чтобы представить ее, как она решается, вот представьте, мы та самая мафия, мы живем в Швейцарии. Вот. А в Чернобыле как жахнуло, как говорил Петруха, помните, в белом солнце пустыне. И радиоактивный облачко может до нас докатиться, и с неба дождичек может покапать. 
In this video I will tell you about the driving forces behind the turmoils in the Ukraine. First of all, let's see what these dirty mainstream media are doing at the moment. The Western media are showing over and over again how innocent protesters get shot by the Ukrainian regime and about the Russian armed forces threatening world peace. And the Russian media and RT, Russia Today, show the opposite. How the West has organized the uprising, using Nazi organizations like the right sector, that the Ukrainian revolution is a Nazi coup. So here we can witness how these damned media of the financial elite are telling entirely contradictory stories to play the peoples out against each other by aristocracies, divide and rule techniques. And yet, the real story behind the curtains is still an entirely different one, not told by either of the opposing medias. If any of these media had any conscience, they wouldn't do this. But they haven't. It's the way they are. This is World War II propaganda full of lies from both sides all over again. And both stories told are a lie, meant to destabilize and sow the seeds of hatred and bloodshed. I'll tell you what the real story is and who's behind it. Let's look at some dates first, showing that Octagon of the Templars and their Swiss Nazi banks are behind it all. On October 15, 2013, the OECD deal with the Swiss banks was signed, which was the very end of the Swiss Nazi banking secret. So Octagon and the Swiss Nazi Templars of the Motherland issued the worldwide order to their worldwide web of Freemasons, to which Russian President Vladimir Putin responded by releasing the oligarch Khodorkovsky shortly after on December 20th, 2013, directly betraying the Russian people by, this, by his act. He waited just before the Olympic Games of Sochi, so everybody accepted the release as a sign of goodwill. Very smart, Mr. Putin, you little devil. Then hardly one week released, the Volgograd terrorist attacks took place on December the 29th, 2013. The time to pull a few strings. Then two days later, on December the 31st, 2013, the deadline of the US Justice Department concerning Swiss banking crimes ended. And we can see how interactive all the international events are with the pressure on Octagon and the Nazi banks. Five days later, on January the 5th, 2014, Khodorkovsky flew to Switzerland and are really to see his children, whom he hadn't seen in liberty for 10 years, because after only five days, he had enough of them. And on January 10th, he flew to Israel. He thanked the Swiss Justice Department for protecting his money in the Swiss banks, he had stolen from the Russian people. Putin let him out so he could transfer the money away from the dying Swiss banks just in time. Wonder how much Putin got out of it. Then, only six days later, on January 16th, 2014, the oligarch President Yanukovych of the Ukraine and fellow oligarch and friend with Khodorkovsky issued anti-protest laws consolidating the Ukrainian dictatorship and increasing the pressure on its people. One week later, on January the 22nd, the first people died on the streets of the Ukraine. And all turmoil in the Ukraine started on November 30th, 2013 when Ukrainian riot police raided peaceful student protesters only one month after the OECD treaty with Octagon's banks. The Swiss Nazi banks want war, which they see as their only way out, 
and while they as usually hide away in the Alps while the rest of the world dies. And when we see how Putin released one of Russia's biggest enemies, it's therefore no surprise that Edward Snowden gets protection of the Russian oligarchs with their Swiss bank accounts. Here it becomes clear how the silent Putin betrays his people. He just tells them what they want to hear, but in fact, in fact plays for the financial elite with their oligarch friends like Yanukovych, Khodorkovsky and Syop agent for the financial elite Snowden. So on this picture you can see those Berkut um, killers with the sniper rifle of the Ukraine. You see them kneeling and they want, they're begging for mercy while they still show their octagon symbol just behind. So symbols don't lie folks and we can see exactly the same symbol here at the entrance of Yanukovych house which was built by the Swiss. I'll show it to you later, just in a minute. So don't show mercy on these guys because they don't deserve it. They'll do it again and again. They just put on another uniform and find themselves a new name and do it all over again. Do not show mercy because they won't have it for us. And only a handful of people in the US put pressure on the Nazi banks of the Swiss Templars like Senators Carl Levin and John McCain and a handful of good men in the NSA, CIA, IRS and FBI which are of course overall rotten and infiltrated organizations with Octagon's fifth column within. It must be clear now that the Nazi banks of Octagon, Switzerland steer the turmoils in the Ukraine with Yanukovych robbing his own people, bringing the money on some Swiss banks. But why did the pharaohs of the financial elite chose the Ukraine? Well, the answer is the Syria conflict and there probably won't be any war in the Ukraine. But Russia has to pull out military resources out of the Mediterranean near Syria into the Black Sea to the Crimea of the Ukraine. So finally, the onslaught on the Syrian Alawites and plans of the New World Order can have their go for the Islamic conquest over the Syrian Alawite na nation while Russia is occupied elsewhere because of rather domestic dangers inflicted upon by the very same enemy. And the whole Islamofascism has been set in place by Octogon's great eminences as François Genoux Ahmed Huber al Swizri, Geri Müller and others behind the screens. Nowhere else in the world Hitler's book Mein Kampf is being read, copied, multiplied and published more than in the Muslim world thanks to the numerous Swiss sleeper agents and octagon fifth column agitators. It's very easy to manipulate the public and set up peoples against each other, which the media are doing at the moment. You send in some PSYOPs operators with some fascist symbols on the jackets doing some Hitler salutes and show some right sector, right wing crisis actors and then show them on Russian TV over and over again. And on the other side, in the West, they only show how bad and aggressive Russia is. This is a long time organized setup, folks, in order to get on with the Syrian agenda. And all led by Octagon, the Swiss banks, financial elite, oligarchs and the fair aristocracy. And just like this one here, on Russian TV and Western TV, we probably see... Uh, in connection with the Ukraine, the same crisis actors as we can see here. Does anyone know that the Ukraine spent 9.8 billion dollars on the arms trade with China in 2012? Money offered by the US and NATO because they won't and can't intervene military so they use the same Afghan, Afghan tactics 
when in the 80s 900,000 Chinese made Kalashnikovs with no serial numbers and paid by US tax dollars or rather Kovob's drugs money got delivered to the Mujahideen to fight the Russians and finally together with some famous US surface to air heat seeking missiles called Stingers broke the neck of the USSR. There you can see it. Yeah. 9.8 billion, there it says. Well, that's a hell of a lot. I was personally there in Afghanistan in 1985. Spent a year there and saw it happen. Same things happen now. Now the US Army tries to recollect their gift without telling ordinary soldiers that they're being shot at with US financed weaponry in Afghanistan. They don't say there's nothing, they hide it all. And then this one, it's a nice one too. Ukraine was the fourth largest arm exporter in the world in 2012. The fourth biggest in the world. So the Ukraine was exporting bloodshed to the world and to other dictators and oh nice. They hide everything from us and so does Putin and the media who tell us shit. Putin's ancestry has been erased and is a mystery. But we do know that his grandfather was a cook for Lenin and remained so for Lenin's wife after Lenin died. Lenin, who spent time in Octagon as well. And he even was a cook for Stalin. And Stalin was so paranoid that he would never have someone who is not a dedicated member of the Per A lay hands on his food with the possibility of poisonous assassination. So Putin was born into the circles of power. So he's one of them all right, telling the Russian people what they want to hear, knowing that Russians hate all these homosexuals perversions, so they love him for that. But why then did he have all those che Chechnyans massacred who are devoted Muslims and smell a queer from a mile before they hang him. And this Russian Putin Tsar liberated the worst criminals, rapists, murderers and serial killers from Russian high security hard labor camps in return for joining the Russian army in Chechnya and who got known by the Russians and the Chechnyans under the name of Kontrakt Niki. Here you can read it. Contract Niki. K O and there's an N T R A. Uh, the rest I, I don't know what it means. While those brave Chechen Chechnyan fighters, when they caught a 19 year old Russian conscript, they had him call up his mother to come and pick him up, which they did actually, and release the kid. This is who Putin really is. And he fosters the very same perverted homo agenda as his New World Order pals in the West do. Knowing Russia needs some more time and a couple of more wars to duly accept that New World Order homo agenda. Now Putin calls the Ukrainians a brother people with the Russians. I wonder to whom he thinks he's lying to. Because I don't think that the Ukrainians have forgotten the Holodomor of 1932 and 33, when at least 7.5 million Ukrainians and their children were deliberately starved to death by Stalin and the Soviets. The Ukrainian word Holodomor means hunger by death and has been officially recognized by the world since 2006. Stalin held the, had the Bolsheviki and Russian army steal all the food, grains, rye, wheat and everything else. 
so the people would die with the harsh Russian winter coming up while Stalin and the communists were partying, raping women and killing loads of people in Moscow, just as the Tsars and the aristocracy used to do. Being a full proof that the fair aristocracy immediately took over the people's revolution by the controlled opposition, as Lenin himself used to say, the best way to control the opposition is to lead it ourselves. If you would have any respect, Putin, after you and your man, your ancestors, killed at least 10 million Ukrainians not very long ago, then you would leave these people alone. But you do not have any respect, Putin. Put in your menace again for the Ukrainian people and a menace even to the Russian people and a menace to the world, you pharaoh. Little dead Ukrainian children, Mr. Putin. Millions died. And you want to do this again, eh? We know who you are now. Loads of murdered Ukrainian children, Mr. Putin. And you tell us that the Russians and the Ukrainians are brother people? Don't let us laugh. The pharaohs, as Mr. Putin himself, don't like peoples who resist, like the Ukrainians and Romanians, and keep them in poverty, while as the Swiss, who collaborate 100% with the system, if not 400%, and betray the Europeans and other peoples, they get everything. Wealth, no war, and the peoples voting every three months. Doesn't that make you think? It was the Dutch peoples of these very regions who, of all peoples, conquered by the Romans, gave the fiercest resistance by wiping out two entire Roman legions. And the pharaohs, like the Swiss, they never forget anything. Yanukovych is a friend of Putin and an oligarch, just as Khodorkovsky. An oligarch means a few who reign, and they are very rich, which is just another terminology for the fair aristocracy. See, here we can see some reptilians here. Here's the lion, the symbol of the aristocracy, and the symbol of the, uh, the, um, the pharaonic nobility and the pharaonic dignity. See my film, The Fair Aristocracy. And here we can see a part of Le Fleur de Lys coming out. Yeah. So this is very aristocratic, you know, they're pharaohs, this is the pharaohocracy. Well, nobility still rules. The pharaohs became the nobility and the aristocracy, whom I call the pharaohocracy. See my video, the pharaohocracy and the pharaoh show and octagon, the empire of darkness. And especially in Russia, because there were too many revolutions going on, they decided to hide in Freemason lodges, but here it pops out. Look at the uh, the nobility setup here, <laughs> and they know it. Oh yeah. Well, there they are. They are again here. Putin, Yanukovych, and the Sun hieroglyph of the pharaohs. See my film, The Pharaoh Show. That means these are pharaohs. I wonder what that is. That is here. There's loads of pictures, and the same symbol we find all over Yanukovych's Swiss-built house. These are Swiss sleeper agents from Octagon. And if you enter the house, his house here, you can see an Octagon. The same Octagon as these Berkut serial killers shooting at innocent people. Another Holodomor, um, where they're kneeling down, you can see the Octagon. Who are the true Nazis? 
well, this guy is lying and say, well, the other, the, 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 the people are the Nazis. Well, come on. Ah, oh, here's another aristocratic setup. This is the grail of the pharaohs. It means our blood is here. And look what pops out. It's the fleur de lys here. And this one too. So that means out of the pharaohs, the aristoc aristocracy in the fleur de lys gets born. And they belong to it and they know it. You midget. And, uh, yeah, they know it. They know it very well. They know all these symbols. Watch the Pharaoh show, people. And if there's any Ukrainian revolutionaries, do contact me. Uh, Fleur de Lys, the Grail. Our blood is here. Our descendants are here. We are here and we rule over you people. So what's I want to say? And actually this here is blue and gold. They are the colors of the pharaonic dignity. You know, remember the mask of uh, Tutankhamun. Yeah, got me? And here are the other ones. Who are just part of the game. Which I explain to you later on. Again, gold and blue. The all-seeing eye. Yeah, the eye of Horus. Yeah, IHS, Horus, Isis, Horus, and Seth. He's part of it. Here we can see the ultimate proof by the pharaonic symbols to whom Yanukovych belongs to the fair aristocracy. It's so important to, to them to show their power and symbols that they get over courageous and give us the proofs themselves which I have shown to you in The Pharaoh Show and Octogon, The Empire of Darkness and Pharistocracy. So here, this is an oversized sun hieroglyph here. The round thing in the middle, I show this to you a couple of times and the two bars on each side. And within the symbol, there's another sun hieroglyph here at the side, within, in, in one of the bars here. So here's the round circle with the two bars on each side. So watch the Pharaoh show, you can see that. These circles here, there are exactly 13. I'll show that later on, as well, uh, another time you can't see it here. Because uh, Osiris was, cho was chopped in 13 pieces, and that's why the American flag has 13 stripes, etc. It's a very important number for them. And there's a lot of gold and blue, which are the colors. Here's another, a lot more gold, which are the colors of the Pharaonic dignity. This guy is a true pharaoh, and he wants to destroy the Ukrainians, because, uh, well, this is Dacia area. Yeah, show you some more. So here we can see that there are exactly 13 round circles. And the 13th part of Osiris, where was cut, was his, uh, was his, uh, his phallus, which they couldn't find anymore, so they created the obelisk, which is carved because it's a symbol of the circumcision and the symbol of the slaves, actually. I made a film about the circumcision, so go and have a look. And the very first symbol you see when entering the house, which looks like an oversized Swiss chalet, is the octagon. Octagon, where he and Khodorkovsky have their money stashed in some Swiss banks and caves in Octagon, the motherland, just as Adolf Hitler, the Nazis and all the other criminals. So here we can see the Octagon symbol. It almost looks like a, um, like uh, looking through a scope. Well, we, we are, the, they're aiming at us, you see. You know, it looks like the crosshairs of a, of a scope of a sniper. Well, we know that Berkut, well, they, they like sniping. Well, here's the sniping symbol. Octagon of the Templars. See my film, Octagon, the Empire of Darkness. I'm not going to explain it all to you here again. Here's the triangle of the Freemasons with the round circle of the sun hieroglyph within it. I don't think these people understand this. They don't see it. I'd like to show this to all the Ukrainians. Come and contact me, we'll team up. 
And if you look at his land where he's got his palace, you can see the Swiss cross of the Templars. See the Pharaoh show. So where he's got his money and the other oligarchs, as Khodorkovsky, thanking the Swiss Justice Department. You know, symbols don't lie, folks. I tell you, the dictator, Viktor Yanukovych, is probably one of those fifth-column Swiss sleeper agents, as Eisenhower, General Custer, J. Edgar Hoover, President Herbert Hoover, and the rest of the scumbags. Anyhow, Yanukovych is part of Octagon, and the fair aristocratic symbols show us enough. Symbols don't lie. So here's Yanukovych's pink bed. Here's the sun hieroglyph on his bed, uh, making little pharaonic uh, descendants. And uh, I thought Putin, while he's pretending not to like any homosexuals, you know, while he's having a friend with a with a with a pink bed, you see, he's lying. They're all lying. Oh, it's all horrible. Well, here's the billiard room. Here's a sun hieroglyph. Here's another one. And here's the vesica pitches forming the oval in between. You know, like the two circles. See my videos about this. Like the oval office. Another oval here. Um, well, here the, the triangle of the Freemasons. A little altar here. This is probably the sun hieroglyph. It's almost on the uh, where the open fire is. They always put it there. I'd like to have a look what these statues are. So maybe the uh, I don't have any passport, no country wants me. Um, like the Ukrainians, like resisting. And uh, so maybe the new Ukrainian government can give me a passport. Then I would come over and analyze this uh, pharaonic palace for you guys. So I would love to become a Ukrainian. I've been here in Switzerland. I'm a South African. I've been here in Switzerland for 17 years. But they don't like me. They don't like any immigrants, you know. And uh, uh, when a Swiss goes to France, like he gets a new part of French nationality in five years, you know. I've been here for 17 years. So I, w I would love to, to take a Ukrainian uh, citizenship. I would be proud, you know, like a, uh, with a resisting people as you guys. I, w I would be proud to take that nationality, yeah. So I help you, you help me. And I analyze the house and the rest. And I, I give you a face to the ones who are um, terrorizing you. And I, I would see a lot of more things. promise you that. Another obscure room. It looks like he's got a, uh, a big all-seeing eye where his ass should be. This looks a little bit like a sun hieroglyph, but not entirely. But it's very, um, it's very strange. These are octagonal here. Um, yeah, yeah. So come on, give me a Ukrainian citizenship, and I can tell you, I fought the Russian army twice. I was in Afghanistan one year, in '85, and. Uh, uh, fought against the Russian army in Namibia, Angola, Kabinda. Uh, Botswana uh, during the uh, border wars in South Africa so we might be good friends eh? I know what it is fighting the Russian army so here's some more Vesica Pitches forming the oval here as well forming the oval, the, the oval office this is the sun hieroglyph here with an, a little tiny one on top here as well it's all pharaonic. They're all pharaohs. They're not Europeans. They're not even Russians. So here we can see Yanukovych's loo. You know where he, where he feels like a pharaoh. Well, this this is very pharaonic, with two lions, the symbol of the pharaonic dignity, which the aristocracy, who are the same, took over. There are no lions in Ukraine. There are bears and and wolves. So this means there's a uh, a foreign power ruling over the Ukraine who are not European at all it's the enemy within 
So this is in his garden. This is the grail. It means our blood is here. Our descendants are here. This is the Freemason triangle. I don't know what this is. And uh, this is the joining. It means we keep together. This is a shell. It's also Freemasonry symbols. This too symbolizes octagon here. Eight pieces here. And uh, like in, as in octagon, Switzerland. And even his Swiss chalet place was built by Swiss companies as the one from Meerenschwand in the canton of Argau, Switzerland. Of whom the carpenter Jürgen Andresen gives his witness accounts how all the workers in Meshigorje spoke German and most of them were Swiss and how he got high wages while he saw the Ukrainians doing the garbage cans to scrap some food together just as during the Holodomor and of course Mr. Swissy Carpenter here didn't buy some food for the garbage can divers I would have spent all my money on these poor people if I had seen that but of course not Mr. Swissy here oh no well, there he is, telling his story in the Swiss newspaper, they don't even hide it. Apparently the notorious Swiss banking service goes a lot further than that, offering and organizing Swiss companies, building Swiss chalets for foreign dictators. I tell you, the Swissies have their dirty little fingers in it all over again, as always, robbing the country blind, bringing the stolen money to Switzerland, then the poor people rise up and in no time were on the edge of a world war again. Oh yeah, Mr. Putin, you said that Ukraine's liberation movement are Nazis. Then how is it that everyone working on your friend Yanukovych, his Swiss palace, all speak German? Got you red-handed, pal. Pharaoh Putin and his gang are playing a very dirty game here, trying to sell the Ukrainians as Nazis in order to play them out against the Russian people. And after psychological analysis, they know very well that this is the tactics the Russian people will bite for. So here we can see how evil the midget KGB dude really is. So here we can see some um, some Russian crisis actors. It's every time the same woman and she's saying, oh, they're all Nazis and well, the pharaohs, they don't like it when the people grab power back, you know. So they, they want to control the opposition again. And, you know, these are the techni techniques they use. Very dirty games. Very, very bad. Another crisis actor, or a crisis actress, in this case, as in during all those U.S. shootings and 9-11 and in and, and Syria, and, and uh, they man they lied and manipulate. You know that's well. This is what's going on, and Putin is deep in it. Well, the West isn't any better. And on the other hand, the West plays that dirty part of the New World Order agenda. They're just performing the good and the bad cop game. First, the bad Putin cop shows his muscles, threats and aggressions. And then afterwards, the slimy good West cop comes with the financial honey to suck everyone into the New World Order homo agenda, where freedom gradually gets replaced with Pharaoh's total control. The brave Ukrainian people have done a genuine revolution against a full-blooded pharaonic dictator with all their symbols sticking on his house like the graffiti of a tattooed hip-hopper. Same thing. The only solution is that the Russian and Ukrainian people come together without any damn politicians and authorities in between. Real Russians should bring food for the hungry Ukrainians as even the Russian standard of living is at a far higher level. 
And the Ukrainians in return should transmit the know-how of the revolution and their bravery to the Russians. The latter the Russians seem to have lost due to the sheer weight of Putin's dictatorship. And Europeans, Americans and everyone else should go and support the Ukrainians and not depend on the Western New World Order scumbags on all key positions. We the people must help each other and if I had a passport I'd be off to the Ukraine and help out. I might go just like that. What the heck? Anyone joins me? Can anyone ask the new Ukrainian government to give me Ukrainian citizenship? In the whole story the Ukrainians are the only decent ones whom can be trusted. The rest are pharaonic agitators around to get the Ukraine back under pharaonic control. Seeing the overwhelming evidence, there's no doubt that Viktor Yanukovych is a Swiss sleeper agent of Octagon's fifth column from Switzerland of the Nazi Templars, just as Hitler was, Eisenhower, General Koster, J. Edgar Hoover, President Herbert Hoover, and the rest of these oligarch pharaohs. Octagon. Mikhail Khodorkovsky got released by President Vladimir Putin in December 2013 and he looked as if he had never seen a Siberian hard labor camp from the inside, which he probably never has. This extremely dangerous criminal stole billions or maybe trillions from the Russian people and brought the stolen money to the motherland Switzerland thanking the Swiss Justice Department for taking good care of his money and for blocking the Russian financial authorities, like the IRS, not providing legal help to them. So this was in the newspaper from Basel, the, the Basler Zeitung. And in Basel, the, that's, that's the town where the... Um, where the bis is from, so that's the bank of uh, the bank of international settlements. The one on Black Tuesday robbed the American people blind and and financed Adolf Hitler with that. That was the the Nazi bank in Basel. So you can see this is on December the twenty second, two thousand thirteen. And this is what the newspaper where it was in Basel Zeitung, the Butts. Yeah, you know, the butts at the base, the Bank of International Settlements, a whole bunch of crooks. Khodorkovsky says he wants to rejoin Switzerland, where he's based and where his wife and children live. And have a Christmas and New Year's toast with a Swiss pharaonic wine called the Pyramid Wine. Well, this is the Pyramid Wine from... The motherland of the pharaohs. These are no Europeans. Get out of here. The pharaoh wine. Well, these are the kind of immigrants the Swiss Nazi Justice Department hopes to see. Whereas other immigrants get stigmatized and terrorized for life thus abiding the Swiss tradition of double standards and Swiss hypocrisy. This pharaonic big-time criminal who, who's tightly organized with the financial mafia of the motherland says he wants to help political prisoners. Well, he's gonna do shit, I tell you. He's never been in a prison. He could start in Nazi Switzerland, which is full of political prisoners. Komitet Gosodarstvenoi Bezopaznosti, KGB, and Putin are all together in bed with Khodorkovsky. Greetings from Switzerland, and we take care after your money, even if you have been 10 years in a Siberian hard labor camp. Bye bye, Kruzzi. 
If you have no money in Switzerland, then the Swissies will treat you like garbage and apply their silent laws of their subhuman ideologies on you and your family and even go as far as torturing you to get at least some benefit out of you. Whereas if you have loads of money as Michael Khodorkovsky, the pharaoh thief from Russia, then the Swissies are pleased to let you, to let you, because they'll know that through taxes on Khodorkovsky's fortune and residential obligations, the Swiss will get a big chunk out of this Russian money which actually belongs to the Russian people. Now why do you think it shows the Swiss soldier from the Second World War here? You know, to remind us of the Swiss Nazi gold and all this, hey? Why do you think they show this? Uh, it says, well we do just in World War II, we protect all the stolen money. That's why they show it in the same website. Do you get it? It looks like, uh, what's his name, of the Star Wars, look at the helmet, you know, like this, the Darth Vader, this is the Darth Vader helmet. Disgusting. You can read it all, just punch, pause. You can read it all about Swiss crime against us, the people. Is the base of the pharaohs, Octagon. And through his immense fortune, Mr. Khodorkovsky will have a status in Switzerland allowing him to stand above all international laws and agreements, even allowing him to rape our small children. Just as the, uh, the other pedophile and child rapist, Roman Polanski, also living in Switzerland and protected by the Swiss police and Justice Department, where Polanski, just as Khodorkovsky and all the other skis has expressed his gratitude to the Swiss Justice Department. Some people say that Khodorkovsky is a Zionist, whereas the definition of a Zionist is someone who wants to go to Israel. But he doesn't. The guy doesn't want to live in Israel. So by definition, he can't be a Zionist. Well, I tell you what he is. This is a pharaoh. And that's why the other Jimmy Savile child molester organization called the BBC deliberately shows their worldwide community of the enemy within to whom Khodorkovsky really belongs. So the obeying masons of the Swiss judiciary leave him alone and assist him in all eventualities. Therefore the sun hieroglyph is shown next to the Khodorkovsky's head in this lodge of the fair aristocracy, where his, this bold organization of crooks tries to place him at the side of the people by having him say that he will help all political prisoners. Well, he's gonna do shit for political prisoners and us the people, I tell you. This guy robbed the people. Nothing else is a sly sigh up to insinuate he will help the underdog. Slime ball. Because I stand behind the brave Ukrainian people, I, I, I'm, I'm making an effort and show some more um, uh, pharaonic symbols of uh, occult symbols of Yanukovych. I mean, symbols don't lie. And if you look at the, at the, sh at the size of this uh, palace, you know, you, you know this is a, a narcissistic uh, pharaoh. It's all pharaonic. And, uh, it, it gives a, a creepy feeling that he, he thinks he can come back like. So this here is the sun hieroglyph at the entrance of his home in another form. These are the two bars and here's the round thing in the middle, the sun. Um, it, it, it happens a lot, they showed in, a, in another form. But it's definitely that, you know. And the house is full of it. Every room has pharaonic occult symbols of Octogon, the motherland. So here is a huge Octogon. And of course here are the ovals of the Vesica Pitches. And it even looks like uh, sun hieroglyphs all over the bar, the round thing, the bar, the round thing. And this is the joining 
for the Freemasons very important. It means we stick together. We have a chain, like the chain of command. Yeah. I mean, why put this at the back of a sofa, of a chair? Why? Well, I'll tell you why. I'll give you a close-up picture then of these things here, just a minute. So this is the joining. And I tell you again, uh, symbols don't lie. So if you have any doubt about this guy and about Putin sitting together with him, well, don't have any more doubt. These are pharaohs. This is the aristocracy. These are the Tsars. Like in the word Tsar, as in a sarcophagus, it means the king. That's why there's the word Tsar. Like in Caesar, the king of Rome. Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon. Sarkozy, the king of um, France. The Tsars, the Russian Tsars. The wind Tsar, it's all Tsar. And Tsar means a king, as in a sarcophagus, which is a box to put the king in when he's dead. I told you all this in the Pharaoh show and Octagon, the Empire of Darkness and Pharisocracy. Well, have a look at it. So this is Octagon of the Templars. There's even an Octagon here in the, in the middle and this one here. And, uh, yeah. Because the Templars, they always build their castles and everything octagonal. And they are Pharaohs as well, which I explain in, in the film Pharisocracy. So the pharaohs never disappeared, and they became the um, the aristocracy, and I call them the pharisocracy, and they decided to hide in Freemasonry lodges. And here's the sun hieroglyph of the pharaohs, and I think this is another one. And up here there's some more. Here we can see the symbol of octagon, and where he belongs to, where he's got his money on the Swiss octagon, Swiss bank. It has eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight circles around it. It's not an entirely, well, from here the picture shows it's not entirely octagonal, the shape here, but that doesn't matter. Everybody knows the insider, they, the insiders, they all know uh, what is meant with it, you know. And because he's very narcissistic, this guy, he only thinks about himself. I mean, you can you, you can see he only thinks about himself. He doesn't care about the people, you know. So he does it in a different form, and these forms have existed as well uh, throughout history. Well, I mean, people look at what's glittering, and uh, so this guy is say the, the Ukrainian guy in Russian. He's saying Il illustria, you know, the lamp here. But you know, the most important thing he doesn't see. So here's like um, at the door at the entrance is a sun hieroglyph here again, and there's another one here. I give you a close up. These are pharaonic symbols of the aristocracy. They never left. The Tsars are still there, and um, the communists with Stalin. They were also uh, the aristocracy. They just took over control again. You know, like Lenin. He said, if you want to control the opposition then uh, take the lead of it. Oh, there it is, the sun hieroglyph. They always, you know, they infiltrate everything. Even national socialism of the Germans. In the beginning it was quite a good thing, helping the Germans who were starving, just like the Ukrainian people. And then it got infiltrated by Adolf Hitler and his gang, you know, with his Swiss bank accounts. And he was financed by Switzerland, by uh, General Ulrich Wille in 1923. So then it became a very evil thing, as we all know. The same with communism. And I hope I can help the Ukrainians with all this here, that their new movement of the Ukrainian revolution doesn't get in um, infiltrated. But it looks like, uh, you know, all the oligarchs in the, in the new governments, you know, it's already infiltrated, all for nothing. And here's another one. I mean, he shows it all over this guy. It's, it's amazing. You know, he's showing off to his pharaonic pals. And then there's this oligarch, Igor Kolomoisky. Oh, he's even living in Geneva in Switzerland. A billionaire. Switzerland always got their dirty little fingers in it. All over, everywhere, always. That's their base. You know, so if we want to change the world, we should start cleaning up in Switzerland and cleaning out all the Swiss caves and etc. Oh, look at this pharaonic uh, 
wall here. Yeah. <laughs> Two times the sun hieroglyph here. It's not really, it might be the acacia leaves of the, the joining. And here, definitely the oval. And it goes on here. You know, this is one circle here. And here's the other circle. And it's forming the oval, as in the oval office. And this is part of a joining here, going up here. I can't see it all. I, I, I would really like to come here and analyze it for you guys. And do show this to uh, Mr. Klitschko and his brother. Yeah, they, they would love to see it. And there's a lot of uh, disinfo about Klitschko and all this. That he's uh, like a Zionist and all this crap. Um, uh, well, I mean, uh, here are the proofs who the bad ones are. So I mean, if uh, and then there's uh, Yulia Timoshenko, who who was in prison. There's a lot of disinfo about her as well, just as they do about me, you know. But if you see all these, these are proofs. These are not lies, you know. It's all here. Then you know who the bad ones are. So if these guys lock this woman up, then she's okay, you know. You know what I mean? She's okay, folks. <laughs> I mean, look at the pharaonic altar, you know. Here's the joining again at the back of the uh, of the seat of the sofa. You know, it, it, it has otherwise it has no meaning at all. Why put something like this at the back of the sofa? And there's much more to see. This is the sun hieroglyph, the round thing in the middle, the two bars here. It's always at the chimney somewhere. I can't see what this is. Ah, here's another small sun hieroglyph. This is probably two times Isis. And here's the oval again and the sun hieroglyph. Um, it, it's, th th this looks very pharaonic. I think a similar thing we found like in the grave of uh, Tutankhamun. Right, look at it, you know. They're all pharaohs. The aristocracy, the nobility. I mean, look at it, you know. It, 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 the whole sensation is pharaonic. It's, it's like opening up the grave of some uh, of a pyramid of some of some pharaoh well the pyramids most most likely were no graves at all you know but okay anyway it's it's like opening up a pharaonic grave look at it i mean we all feel it and i explain it to you your feelings i tell you what your feelings are everybody all ukrainians have been in here we all, they all probably had this creepy feeling, so what's going on here? There's something, I've seen it before, like, you know, and, and all the gold and glitter, and then where did I see it? Well, I tell you, it's pharaonic, and the proofs are there. Symbols don't lie. <laughs> I mean, look at this pharaonic little fancy table. And these are horns. You know, these are horns. Probably a poor an an uh, elephant or... A rhino had to believe it, you know. It's a black horn. This is a black horn in gold, set in gold. Oh, it's, it's, it's horrible. It's disgusting, you know. So, I mean, symbols don't lie. I told you a couple of times. But Yanukovych, he lies. He never told you about the symbols, did he now? Of course he didn't. It's full of it. So here, this is the joining of the Freemasons all over. It means like we, we keep together, we stick together here as well. Oh, I can't see that. Uh, all these, the, these are the sisters of Isis here. You know, that's the Eve syndrome. As I told you, the, the, uh, the higher nobility, they mixed through the Prime Noctus, raping our women with us. And out of this, the lower nobility came up. <laughs> So, it uh, would be a good thing to look into his uh, genealogy of uh, Yanukovych. I tell you, you end up in Switzerland. Bloody Pharaoh. Well, let's have another look at the chimney again. Uh, this is definitely the sun hieroglyph here. Well, let's count these. I tell you, it's going to be 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I told you so. 13. Because they chopped up Osiris' body in 13 parts. The American flag has 13 stripes. It's all the same thing, you know. 
And here's another sun hieroglyph like uh, hidden under the horse here. Oh, this is heavy stuff, eh? Well, this is the Horus Matrix in short. You know, the sisters of Isis here. I think she's uh, giving milk to a child here. And this is the offspring. This is Isis, Isis, and this is Horus, you know. And by killing the man and raising them, uh, the children themselves, look at my video about Omaha Beach. Um, it, uh, the name is No More Wars Fight the Enemy Within. They think they can make little angels who obey to them. And this is why we got all the wars. And this is why we had the Holodomor and 10 million brave Ukrainians had to die and their children. You know, because the pharaohs couldn't use them. Well, this is the, the Horus Matrix. You know, they want to create man again, new, from scrape, from scratch, sorry. And here again on this vase, you know, a lot of gold and this is the joining again. We stick together, you know, we hold together, we organize, we lie against the people. Well, this is indicating Seth or Sethon, Satan, Seton, the devil, one hand up. A one down, what's below is, what's up is below. And, uh, well, I mean, uh, they lie to us. Everything is a lie. Uh, deception is the biggest enemy of evil, eh? Clean Switzerland, eh? So neutral and always innocent. They never did anything wrong, eh? Deception is the biggest arm of evil, eh? Swissies. Here too, in the balcony, it's a sun hieroglyph all over. I'll give you a close-up picture. Symbol of the pharaohs. Ukrainians are my favorite people. I would like to become a Ukrainian. So, um, and come and help you people. Uh, the round thing in the middle. And sort of like the two little things with the two bars. And there's another one here on top here. The round thing in the middle and the two bars here. It's another form. It's very artistic. Uh, they are allowed to, to show it in different forms. And of course, there's the original one as well. And, uh, but it's um, the artist's uh, freedom of expression, his sun hieroglyph. And he's, showing the, he's showing off with the circles, you know. There's the inner circle, the checkered floor of the Freemasons, you know. There's that political wing true pharaohs and they got a, uh, a military wing, the Templars, and they got a, uh, a uh, religious wing, the, uh, the church, and they have a financial wing, Switzerland. And this is the same thing we saw in carved in wood when you go into the, uh, into the house. This is the bar, you know, these things here, and the round thing in the middle. It's all over. And um, yeah, he's showing the, uh, the circles of power here. I showed it to you in, in another video. And again, within the big uh, sun hieroglyph, we can see the a small su sun hieroglyph with a round thing in the middle and sort of two bars on each side. Well, they, they do that a lot. And um, even here in the bathroom for his wife, you know, <laughs> you get thrown at it at, with it all over, you know, the triangle of the Freemasons. And I suppose this is the, the grain. Our blood is here, our grains are here, our descendants are here. And, um, well, this guy is heavy, you know. <laughs> I think he's even, with all this showing here, he's a, he's, a, he's a danger for their own organization, you know. You know it's always uh, a, a, a big mouth in crime, a big mouth showing off and buying a sports car immediately with the dough, like, you know. And, and everybody, it, <laughs> look at the pharaonic bedroom. Here's the Vesica Peiches forming the oval into a uh, Swiss cross almost. Here, this is a circle, and these are circles, and this is a circle like this, and this is a circle, and they're all forming ovals, the oval office. Here's the Fleur de Lis, the symbol of the, of the aristocracy or the fair aristocracy. Another triangle of the, the Freemasons. Uh, with the sun hieroglyph in the middle. Here's another one. Oh, you can't see that one. Uh, well, this guy, he's, uh, he's so confident of his, of his lies. He's an enormous psychopathic liar. 
while he's showing all his uh, his symbols to whom he really belongs all over his his Swiss oversized chalet. Oh, here's the fleur de lys. It's the uh, the Nile lily actually of the pharaohs of the aristocracy. There is the Vesica pitches here, all these circles here, forming a lot of nice ovals, another circle, and here's a circle, as in the Oval Office. This as the joining, it means, uh, well, it's also the, um, the womb of Isis, and a part of the all-seeing eye, if you put the eye in here. And uh, it also means, uh, th th that's why it has another color here. You know, it means like uh, joining together an organization. So this part here, which has a different color, they have in common. So like this is one person or one organization. This is the other person. And this is their organization, what they have in common. You know? And uh, well, that, that's what it means, actually. Here's a weird leather alchemy sort of book straight out of Lord of the Rings or um, Harry Potter, if you wish. Yeah, you know, look at it on all these circles here. They're in, it's for his children, you know. They get raised with these things, you know. And here's the oval. Looks like two planets here and one in the middle. It's, it's again the round thing in the middle and the two bars at each side going diagonal. Even for his kiddies, eh? They get raised with it real quick. And to indoctrinate and raise the children, you know, this is in the children's room of Yanukovych, you know, with all the children's drawings and they show this. It means keep silent. Deception is our biggest weapon. Don't talk. We got the secret. The joining. We join together. We got the uh, Vesica Peiches. We organize and the Europeans and the Ukrainians, they are just our slaves. And uh, it reminds me of Switzerland, how they keep tight and silent with their neutrality swindle, you know. It's so typical Swiss, you know, keeping secret. Yeah. I can't see it very well, you know, but um, here's another, the round thing in the middle. I think this is an octagonal form here. And here's also the, the round thing in the middle, and it all, it all looks very, very aristocratic. As any, any criminal inspector, um, Scotland Yard FBI type, you know, knows, if you want to solve the crime, then follow the money into Switzerland. So in his palace, it shows the, uh, the Orthodox Church here, with the joining. You know, what is the joining doing in an Orthodox Church? Well, here it shows in this Pharaonic palace, you know, if they are so religious or well, seem to be, or uh, then religion is not for us. It's not for the Europeans. It's not for the world. It's for them. And they, um, they talk about some invisible being up in the skies and always you have to show the other cheek, you know, and... and present the other cheek to them and uh, have them beat you and well don't rise up don't defend yourself you know that's what they like eh? so this is their religious wing it's one of the at least four wings the religious wing the political wing the Freemasons the uh, financial wing Switzerland and the military wing the uh, the Templars Octagon also Switzerland so here again in the church, the, the holy shrine, you know, with all their heroes. I don't think they're our heroes, you know. They probably show a lot of mass murderers here, you know, killing the people. I mean, this guy, he's lying to us, you know, and, and he's, uh, what the religion, uh, you know, concerning the religion and Yanukovych, I don't even think he's a hypocrite, you know, about this. Because it's their religion with totally different criteria and beliefs than what they present to us so their belief is a, is a totally different one than the one they make us believe you know so he really believes in this but it's only it's for them all religions come from the pharaohs i will not be surprised that they've done some sacrifices here with children 
and in the cellars I also saw some torture chambers. So first the torture chambers and then do the rest here like, you know. So here's a lion, you know, in his, um, with, with the tennis court behind, you know, and all these pharaonic uh, pillars. Why a lion? Because the lion is the symbol of the, uh, the pharaonic dignity. And the aristocracy, they continued this line and this uh, heritage. And in, in most f uh, aristocratic um, coat of arms of the nobility, you find a lion. So, I mean, the Ukraine, there are no lions. In Europe, there are no lions. You've got wolves and bears. So why not a wolf or a bear? It's always a lion. Because there's a foreign power ruling over us, the pharaohs. This is another proof. This guy is, it, he, it, it's, it's very thick here, what, what he's showing us here. Very, very thick. And he, he might be, a, he's a big danger for his own pharaonic organization. Because he's showing off too much. Uh, he wanted to be the king, but he's lying. Lie on. <laughs> So here are some more sun hieroglyphs. Here's one, and here's one. Probably the uh, and here's the joining up here, and here's another joining. And oh, there's a lot more to see. I should come and have a look myself. So guys, give me Ukrainian passport and a citizenship and a Ukrainian nationality. I would be proud of it because you're very brave people, and um, I would like to um, to make part of you and uh, to, to be with you and I'll analyze it for you okay well this is left of his gun collection I suppose the uh, the Ukrainians they provided themselves with a couple of goodies eh? it's all empty <laughs> or oh, he took it with him in his chopper so this guy really has a violent side you know you see it's um, it's under the belt level you know subconscious um, sub violence he doesn't show it but it's there you know that's why he, he had this looks like all sniper rival things you know that's why he had he had them shot at shoot at the people you know this is showing the true nature of his underlying uh, psychology of this guy eh? see well, there's an interesting room here. Uh, I mean, what do you make of it? Well, the carpet looks a bit um, um, a Arabic, Muslim type. You know, this is this this is like a prayer room for inviting Muslims. You know, the ones who have the oil. Well, well, Ukraine has a lot of oil. That's what it's all about, partly. The Jews' tragical, strategical part of it. So this is uh, the part of the lake or the sea. Is it the Black Sea? I don't know. Well, anyway, this is Le Fleur de Lis. It's a symbol of the aristocracy. So this guy, he's, it is the aristocracy. The Russian Revolution, it never worked out. You know, they took hold of the revolution very quickly after and then killed all these people, the Holodomor and everything. Apparently, they don't like the Ukrainians very much, you know. Um... This is the aristocracy. Symbols don't lie. Yanukovych lies, you know, with this woman, you know, putting her, uh, her index finger on her lips, you know, don't say anything, keep the secret, keep tight, do it the Swiss way, you know. But symbols don't lie. This is, uh, this is the nobility, this is the black nobility, and they rule the world. They do. Well, and here is the uh, the ship where he built a restaurant in it. Uh, he called it Galleon or Le Galleon. Leon, that's the lion. He put the word lion because normally it's with an I here. So he made a reference to the uh, to the lion as well. The, the one of the symbols of the pharaonic dignity, and at the same time uh, it refers to all his money and gold which he has stashed in in Octagon, Switzerland. That's why he called it Galleon. He's so narcissistic, it's, it's so thick over it, you know. 
and here is a reptilian on the bow of the ship it's a reptilian you see look at that well these are thick eh so <laughs> I wonder why he uh, why he put this uh, this woman with the, with the index finger on her, on his lips you know on her lips sorry well he looked a bit like a he <laughs> so you know um, I mean he doesn't keep quiet look at it this is shouting out loudly eh who he is who he really is it's nothing this is not a whisper this is a cry a cry for psychological help it is you know like please help me I'm so you know I'm so disturbed and would anybody you know well anyway okay well, these were the kind of cops he was drinking out, you know. And of course, this is ISIS. The uh, symbol here, uh, the logo, looks a bit like the American coffee shop. What's the name again? <laughs> he even had bottles made with his own face on it. <laughs> Isn't this guy a laugh, eh? It says, export vodka to all the other pharaohs so that they, they think of him, you know. Every time they drink, they, they have to think of Yanukovych. It says, export vodka. So they export it to his Swiss pals, to the uh, nobility in England. You know, that's how they do it, you know. It's all gold and... It even looks serious. I mean, this, this is a slapstick, isn't it? Jeez. Well, this is very interesting here. Look. Why does it show a gold goose foot here well I'll tell you this is one of the symbols of the reptilians in French they call it pied doigt the foot of the goose and uh, in France they really had this cago people who some of them had one foot like uh, la dame uh, la reine la reine de pied uh, de, de pédoc and um, I mean, this is a reptilian foot on his on his gold-plated toilet. Yeah. So this reptilian foot um, refers to uh, who they really are, you know. Piedois, le cago. Even one of Napoleon's generals was a cago. And the cargo they could only live high up in the mountains because they're missing some uh, some elements. They can't live near to the sea. I forgot the name of it. The mountains, you see, the Alps, the mountains, Switzerland. Uh, this is interesting as well. I think this is octagonal. It looks octagonal as to refer to the uh, the, the Templars and the Nazi Templars, to uh, whom they who were also part of the aristocracy. And look at the people here. I'm I'm very surprised the Ukrainians. They're so collected and so quiet and and uh, um, so peaceful. You know, walking around here. I mean, we've seen all the images of, of the of the Arab Revolution. How they how they beat everything up. You know, and stole all the gold and silver and and gold plated toilets. You know, and but here they they leave it as it is it's um very collected very peaceful very respectful um these are great people i can see this very nice lovely people here's one of yanukovych uh, gold plated toilets you know it's no seriously they found it in his swiss chalet as well everything gold a gold plated toilet wow the do you um, do you does anybody trust the guy who puts his uh, who puts his sloppy ass on a on a gold plate toilet? What kind of a what kind of a person is this? Isn't it sick? So and he's a friend of Putin, you know, who's supposed to be against queers and all that. And these type of friends he's having with a with a pink bedroom and all this, they're all lying. You know, all of them. All these politicians. Well, and my choice is the Ukrainian people. That's my choice. You know, all these pharaohs here. 
<laughs> and this is what the brave Ukrainian people made out of it. So here's Ukraine, um, Yanukovych sitting on his on his gold toilet in a cage on the Maidan Square, and a child looking at him, <laughs> looking at Putin's big friend, eh? And the pal of the uh, of the oligarchs and the other the other pharaohs. Wow. Aren't they great Ukrainians? I mean, I I understand that um, the pharaohs and the arist the aristocracy don't like these kind of people very much. <laughs> a gold plate, a toilet. I must be joking. I hear they probably pulled off a statue on some or Lenin statue or something on a pillar and put the the, the gold plate at Yanukovych Putin's friend toilet on top of it. <laughs> fabulous. This is fabulous, folks. Hey, Putin, you got any more friends with gold play the toilets? Or maybe pink play the toilets? Or both pink and gold? I think you do, mate. I got you red-handed, pal. Or gold-handed. <laughs> I got you pink-handed, pal. <laughs> so this is from Wikipedia in, uh, about Yanukovych. When he was 17 in, 19, in the wild 60s, it says, he was even uh, uh, sentenced for robbery and assault. I, uh, I mean, the guy's a hip-hopper, man, with a, uh, a gold-plated toilet and a lot of gold chains around his... Instead of gold chains around his neck, he's got a gold plate of toilet, you know. How come they always are, you know, these guys always sort of are attracted again um, towards gold. I mean, I prefer plastic. Yeah, look, this is from a, uh, from a, it, it's, it was written a couple of days ago. Yeah. And this guy here, uh, Kolomoisky. An, an oligarch, he's, um, he became now in the new government, the self-elected government or whatever, he became a governor or a, uh, or a, a, a minister or something, you know, so the guy, he's, uh, he's Ukrainian-Israeli and uh, he's living in Switzerland, you see, it's all leading back to Switzerland. So what's a guy who's who's in Switzerland and he's 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 the third wealthiest man in the Ukraine. I mean these money collectors and gold plated toilet collectors, why do they have to uh to represent the people? They don't rep represent the people. So well, read it yourself. And uh well, I just uh, I just quote Mr. Lenin again. It was one of them, eh? Let's read it yourself. The best way to lead the opposition is to lead it ourselves, and this is what already happened again. The Ukrainians are dying in the streets, and they make their revolution, and um, the same ones take over again. Nothing. Nothing really changed, eh? And this is what Switzerland really is about. They um, they try to erase all my all my videos I make, you know, because this is uh, Swiss censorship. You can only in this country you can only repeat uh, that Switzerland is neutral, so clean and always innocent. Um, so, yeah. They don't like uh, immigrants who have no money. They only take take the oligarchs. You know, this is the true face of Switzerland. You know, but it's my this is my concerning my video by General Custer. They don't want the world to see this, eh? And here's another film they um, they blocked or erased in a lot of countries like Italy, Austria, Germany. Um, Israel, Poland. Uh, this is uh, this is the true face of Switzerland. You know, they have no freedom of speech. Uh, if you do 
say something or criticize Switzerland, they, they send you the anti-terror police, you know, as they did with me. And this is recent, you know, this was on March uh, the 5th, you know, it's all recent. Uh, they, they erased and blocked so many films and even used their, their Swiss Nazi department, Justice Department, well, uh, they call it the Justice Department, it's a joke, you know. They probably sit on gold plated toilets as well, as a present from Mr. Yanukovych and stolen by the Ukrainian people. A present to Switzerland, a gold plated toilet, eh? Well, where they dump all freedom of speech. And all these oligarchs and financial criminals and pharaohs and aristocrats and uh, they all live in Switzerland where they don't pay any taxes at all. Well, I mean the aristocracy never paid any taxes. They never did really. They took the taxes only. And Switzerland is like a financial aircraft carrier, you know, with which they can um, attack the world. Switzerland is like a financial aircraft carrier in a, in, in a financial ocean, ready to terrorize and attack the world. That's what Switzerland is. They're, they're all there. You now we have to clean up, you know, if, if, if you want to control the beast, you know, you have to take the head, right? The Swiss financial aircraft carrier exporting bloodshed to the world and the suffering of all peoples. United Banksters of Switzerland. This is Octogon, where all the oligarchs are.